Hey guys, Dazzled Magic here, and we've got the last bit of spoilers from Thunder Junction. Um, I think it's got upwards of 600 cards in it, so we're obviously not covering all of them. I'm just going to stick to mostly the rares. Also skipping the reprints, because they're reprints, whatever. So let's start with Wander Between Worlds. It's a 5 cost blue sorcery, and each player may shuffle their hand and graveyard into their library. Every player who does so draws 7 cards, and then exile this card, and then you can plot it for 6. That's right, save it for a rainy day for more mana, but then you can cast it for free when your hand is empty or close to it. It's blue draw, I don't like it, but it's neat. Uh, next up, we got Arid Archway, another desert. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters, return a land you control to its owner's hand. If another desert was returned this way, surveil one. And then it taps for two colorless. Ooh. Next up, it's a reprint of Archangel of Tithes, one of the most underrated angels of all time, and one of my favorite. So it's triple white plus one black, three five flying creature angel, of course, and as long as it is untapped, Creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, unless their controller pays one generic mana for each of those creatures. So it's not impossible to hit you, it's just harder. As long as Archangel of Ties is attacking, creatures can't block unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. So they can either screw up and you overswing and they just, oops, I don't have any mana available, I can't block the way I was supposed to and now I'm dead. Or they just don't even attack you because, you know, they burn the mana and then they have to have the mana to block on counter swing and then need both right after each other. This is such a suppressing creature. The only mistake they made on this was they forgot to make it legendary, which makes it way worse. And this has been released in a format with cloning. So, um, yeah. I might do white, blue, tides, angels, don't attack me, like attack suppression, ward heavy with, like, a bunch of counter spells to cover this card, and then a bunch of cloning. That would just be utterly disgusting. In fact, I've, I'm, I've already built it in my head. I'll build it in reality. Next up, we got Avon Interrupter. It's a three-cost double white 2-2 two, two with flash and flying. When it enters the battlefield, exile target spell. It becomes plotted. So that's any spell on the stack, whether it's yours or theirs. Then spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast. So just in case you nab their spell with this white counter spell... They have to pay two more to cast it if they want to effectively cast it from exile being plotted, but I believe only while he's out because that's a separate paragraph that doesn't address the nature of the card put there. Next up, some furry. I guess her name is Roxanne Starfall Savant. Because, of course, there's meteors in Wild West. They took every single movie and just smashed it together, didn't they? So anyway, uh, you know, Christmas color, five cost, four, three, ledger creature, cat, druid, of course, and when she enters the battlefield or attacks, create a tapped colorless artifact token named Meteorite. This is an alchemy card, what are they even doing? When Meteorite enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target. Yes, we know what the card Meteorite does, it's an actual card. Uh, and then tap, add one mana of any color. Now, it's such a joke card because it costs five, normally, so this is quite silly and then every single time she attacks that's just annoying but okay then whenever you tap an artifact token for mana i wonder when that could happen add one mana of any type that the artifact token produced so you get a little twofer this is a pretty darn powerful card great for meteorite tribal anyway um we got Marchesa, Dealer of Death, from, uh, I don't know, Conspiracyville. I forget the name of the plane. Uh, it's one blue plus one black plus one red, three four, leisure creature, human rogue, and whenever you commit a crime, you may pay one generic. If you do, put the top two cards, oh, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Ooh. I don't see anything about only do this once per turn. I think they legitimately forgot to put that on the card, because this is a little much if you happen to commit a whole bunch of crimes. You can actually infinite chain this, and this only costs three. I think they really messed up with this card, like, badly. So next up, we got Longhorn Sharpshooter. It's a three-cost red creature, Minotaur Rogue. I don't know why I left the center. It's an uncommon, but whatever. Reach, and when this becomes plotted, it deals two damage to any target, and then plot four. Oh, good. The mechanic wasn't good enough, so they added onto it by making the mechanic is the mechanic meta mechanics. That always goes really well. Just ask Madness, and every other thing they've tried to do. Next, I've left this one in because it's a very staple card. It's a three-cost generic Marauder's Hall. It's an artifact, and whenever you commit a crime, put a loot counter on it. This ability triggers only once each turn. 
Hey, they didn't remember to copy and paste that on one of the cards. Then if you tap it, add one mana of any color, and then pay two, tap it, remove two loot counters from it, draw a card. Huge. Absolutely huge. Next up, we've got one more round. What could that possibly be depicting in the artwork? Anyway, it's uh, XX2 and then one white. So three plus, you know, basically X divided by two. Or, well, I guess the inverse, but it depends on your perspective. But uh, Sorcery, exile any number of creatures you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control, and then repeat this process X times. Holy crap! ETB Nightmare. You can just cast this and win the game. You would need a hell of a lot of mana, but you could do it. Next up, we got Kambal, Greedy Mayor, because of course Kambal's here. Why wouldn't he be? Also, why are they? Why is it all white? Why is it all completely different architecture and like futurist suits and stuff? That seems odd. Well, three costs white, black, legendary creature, human advisor, and whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may create a tapped copy of each of those tokens. What the hell? This ability triggers only once each turn. I mean, I hate token dumper decks, but this is absurd. Uh, whenever one or more tokens enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So this is like Blood Moon for token decks. My god, is this weirdly specific while also being completely insane. Next up, Garrow's here, because why wouldn't he be? He's the Flesh Uh Three cost, blue, two, three, legendary creature, human warlock. And uh, whenever you cast a spell during your turn, other than the first spell uh, that turn... Odd way to phrase it, but uh, create a 2-2 two, two blue and black zombie rogue creature token. Whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each other zombie that entered the battlefield under your control this turn. Well, that could go off awfully quick while just silently assisting an it deck, so uh, I don't like this. The power level of the set's getting a little out of control, but, well, they want to sell some, some cards. And, well, in case you didn't notice, they made a mistake... Expanding standard because all things being equal, let's just say every single set has the same power level and same sellability. It doesn't, but let's just pretend. So there used to be what, like a maximum of nine sets legal and standard, or eight, or whatever the hell it was. Um, so you you drop a new set, you have like a one in eight shot of the cards being something somebody wants to build with. All things being equal, that's how it works. Now, for every individual single card, you have like one in what is it now, 14, 12? I don't even know how many sets are legal, too damn many. It ain't four per year, I'll tell you that, so it's it's higher than that, but uh, yeah, I don't know, one in 14, whatever it is now. Well, that's your odds of a card being playable, because it has to compete with that many more. So you have to outshine everything before you in order to be playable. So they really took the, the short-term gains by not having everybody leave Arena immediately when all of their decks simultaneously got nuked and they get absolutely nothing for it. They can't trade them in, they can't buy list them, they can't do anything, they gotta get out the credit card day one to buy the new set to rebuild something. Utterly devastating the last couple times it happened. So they just uh, said, oh, what can we do? I don't know, extend it. Well, now nobody wants your card. So Markov Manor is getting absolutely returned. The vendors are refusing to take it back. Stores are liquidating it and like the highest card is like in, in the normal set, in the normal trim, like 11 bucks. That set makes Homelands look good. What's the saying? Oh yeah. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Yeah, them chickens are coming home to roost in Seattle there, and they I, they deserve it. They absolutely deserve it for ruining the game for their little short-term profits to get Hasbro off their ass for two seconds. It's all going to come crashing down, and I can't wait to see it, because they deserve it. I've already written off the whole game completely because it's dead. But anyway, next up we got Stinger Back Terror. It's a double red, four cost, seven, seven. That's ridiculous. Um, Flying Trample, uh, it gets negative one, negative one for each card in your hand. Oh, so it's just like a girl's masterpiece, but red. Great. And then plot three, because of course. So a better version of Garrow's Masterpiece. That kind of pisses me off. Uh, next up, Hellspur Posse Boss. It's a uh, four cost two, four Lizard Rogue. Other outlaws you control have haste, so you know what those are. And uh, when he enters the battlefield, create two mercenaries. Yeah, kind of solid card, all right. Uh, then we got another Mythic. This is one of the, like, 50 Mythics in the set. Assimilation Aegis. It is a one white, one blue, one generic artifact equipment, and when it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target creature until Assimilation Aegis leaves the battlefield. And when it becomes attached to a creature, for as long as Assimilation Aegis remains attached to it, that creature becomes a copy of a creature card, exiled with Assimilation Aegis, equipped to. 
Uh, so you get their biggest, baddest person, and then for two, you become them? That's pretty good. Pretty spicy. 100% going in my Don't Attack Me Commander deck. Uh, next up, Railway Brawler. Oh, you know what? I didn't tell you the consequences of this. There was actually an end to that story. Distributors and stores are refusing huge numbers. They are cutting their orders, slashing them over this set. Now, this set looks pretty good. It looks great for Commander. It looks great for Draft. It looks fantastic for um, just power cards for anything. It's going to be terrible for Standard, but people will buy it. You know, whatever. But nobody plays Paper Standard anymore, so it doesn't matter. And they only care about paper sales. I mean, digital sales, okay, whatever. Different segment, kind of. But uh, I'm talking about how much physical cards vendors are ordering and it's less because they got burned by Markov Manor and they're like there's other card games and board games I could sell after I just literally lost money by giving wizards the favor of selling their stupid products I will tell you you can only pull that a couple times in a row and people just stop and they are right now pumping the brakes I'm hearing stories left and right that people are like not entirely canceling the order, but just taking the bare minimum. And that's knowing that Modern Horizons 3 is coming out. Your allocation of buying stuff in Standard indicates how much they're willing to give you of the big, big, big sets that you know will do well. So Commander and reprint sets and Horizon stuff. You gotta take the trash and t take a hit on it to get a big run at the jackpot, unfortunately. That's just how it's always worked. I know, I used to own a store. So anyway, Brawler, uh, 5 cost 5-5, five, five, Mythic, uh, Rhino, there we go. Reach and Trample, and whenever another creature uh, enters the battlefield under your control, put X-1-1 one, one counters on it where X is its power. That is f***ing ridiculous. And then Plot 4, because why not? This is so stupidly overpowered. I mean, Mono Green is already too powerful to the point where people run like mid-range, conservative, early to mid-game kill. But this just puts it way over the top. And you gotta, you can't get creative with green. Big creature, trample, put counters on it. it it's, that's all they do. Once you get three years of sets of that crap, this is what you get. You either don't sell the color, so you don't sell the set, or you print overpowered crap and then the color just takes over. Same with mono black attrition. It's got control, it's got ping away. Look at what happened early on with Liliana, and then they, they printed Phyrexian Obliterator for some damn reason. Same thing. Well, anyway, next up, Tai or Tai or who the hell knows is made up language anyway. Uh, Joaquin, perfect shot. It's one red, one blue, two, three, because that's the power level of this. Human mercenary, whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to a creature equal to that creature's toughness, draw a card. That is weirdly specific, but okay. Then if you pay X and tap it, if a source you control would deal non common damage to a permanent player, uh, this turn, it deals that much plus X. Oh, so you can get it way up there. Uh, great. Honestly, a little overpowered for two. But let's move on to Pillage the Bog. It's a two-cost black-green sorcery. Look at the top X cards of your library, where X is twice the number of lands you control. Put one of them under your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order, and then plot three for some reason. I guess if you want a higher shot at it, but yeah, just a combo enabler. I mean, if you're going to fetch something, just go fetch it. But this is like half the cost of the average tutor card, so sure. Next up, Gear Red, maybe Mirror of the Wilds, another three-color legendary for some reason, and that reason being Commander. Uh, one red, one green, one white, three, three with haste. And uh, non-token creatures you control have tap, create a token that's a copy of target token you control that entered the battlefield this turn. Because token dump cloning they think is going to work. It's not. There's too many sweepers and too many board wipes. But then there's Lila, undefeated slick shot. And by sheer coincidence, guys, complete coincidence, she's a female and a minority. Wow, that's so weird. That wizards did that. Huh. It's almost like they're trying to make up for not hiring black people. But I mean, putting them on the card, that's way better than like giving them a, a job or a career or money, obviously. I mean, that's just how that works. I don't need to explain it to you. So yeah, three cost three three with prowess because the set wasn't overpowered already. And then whenever you cast a multicolored instant or sorcery spell from your hand, exile that spell instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, it becomes plotted. And then when you cast it again from Plotted, it does it again because I don't see any restriction. Oh, no, from your hand. Okay, no, I'm a little tired today. D tell me they wouldn't do that. Come on. 
tell me I'm exaggerating that they might have put that on the card. Anyway, next up, we got Rakdos joins up. Oh, boy, some of the art in this set is really weak. It, it's just, like, low res and really weird contrast ratio. Really weird, like, levels luminosity graph. I, I think this was all taken from a bigger image, and they just chopped it up. I don't know. This just looks really strange. And this is the same artist of the last couple that looks strange, so... Maybe they're just talentless, or maybe Watsy chopped up their stuff and it looks like ass. I don't know. Wouldn't put anything past them at this point. I got some inside information about how they treated one of their uh, people involved in this set. Wish I could leak the info, but uh, it would piss you off. Let's just go to my vault of if Wizards really tries to do something stupid to me. We're opening that Pandora's box and y'all gonna have a real bad day over there. But anyway, save that for a rainy day. Uh, Rakdos is joining up for five. One black, one uh, whatever color that is red. Great. Legendary Enchantment when he uh, joins up. <laughs> Return. <laughs> whatever. What an entrance the battlefield. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with two additional 1-1 one -one counters on it. Oh boy, that's nothing for five. But when a legendary creature you control dies, Rakdos joins up deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. Oh, that could create like a no-win scenario. I hate those. How annoying. Good thing nobody's going to play that because it's not up to the power level of the set. Uh, next up, Karavek, the Punisher. Because why would he not be there? Sure, all aboard. Uh, it's a three cost, three, three double black, legendary creature, human warlock. And whenever you commit a crime, exile up to one target black card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy. If you do, you lose two life. That is absolutely absurdly overpowered as well. What is with all the copying and cloning shit in this set? This is completely out of control. So next up, Pitiless Carnage. Holy crap, seriously, who drew this? I could draw this. I think my niece could draw this. This looks like garbage. Who are the artists in this set? This is trash. Richard Kane Ferguson. I'm going to look up the rest of his artwork to see if he has anything resembling talent. Yeah, I checked out his website. He has very little art talent. This would maybe have passed on a card in the 90s. I heard some rumors floating around that nobody wants to work with them, so they're having trouble finding artists these days. Must be true if they dipped this low, because my god, is this guy a wannabe. Anyway, Pitiless Carnage, it's four cost black sorcery, sacrifice any number of permanents you control, draw that many cards, and then plot three. Not fantastic, because in order to cast her from plot, you have to do it at sorcery speed, not when they're about to blow up your creatures. Kind of garbage. Next up, Caustic Bronco. It's a two cost two, two. Snake Horse Mount. I thought I was going to say horror, but eh, what's the difference? Uh, when it attacks, reveal the top card of your library and put it in your hand. Jeez. You lose life equal to that card's mana value if Caustic Bronco isn't saddled. Otherwise, you're out drawing your opponent two to one, so good luck. Uh, each opponent loses that much life. Saddle three. Kind of ridiculous, but so is the rest of the set. Next up, Calamity, Galloping Inferno. It's a six cost red four six legendary creature horse mount. Uh, haste, whatever Calamity, Galloping Inferno attacks while saddled, choose a non-legendary creature that's saddled at this turn and create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. What is with this cloning? They need to calm down with this shit. Jeez. This might as well be called Infinite Triggers the Set. Oh my god. Sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. Repeat this process once. Because of course you would. Why Why would you not? Saddle one. Because f*** you. Oh my god, I hate this set. Every single one of these overpowered and lack of synergy, just island ass rares and mythics better stay the hell out of my draft. Because this set looks really good for draft and they are absolutely ruining it. So, Rush of Dread. Three cost is sorcery with spree. Add one target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control rounded up. That's already an asymmetric semi-board wipe for four, so we're already way pushing the power level. Then add two, target opponent discards half the cards in their hand rounded up, and plus two, target opponent loses half their life rounded up. Holy shit, that's probably a $20 card, except nobody plays magic anymore, so I'm actually going to check because I bet it's comically low. My actual guess is $4.50. 99 cents for one of the best black cards ever printed in the entire history of the game. Really? In Garouk's Wake is $2. Okay, what is even happening with these pre-order prices? And this set has way more rares than it should, but I think they're printed like 2 to 1 now in a 
I don't even know how the damn boosters work anymore. They screwed it up so damn much. Who knows? Who knows how to run any of these calculations? Unreal. If that ain't the sign that the game's dying. So next up, Laughing Jasper Flint. Another just ass quality color. But you know what? Here, here, I'll fix it. Hold on. I'll put them side by side and fix it. This is what I'm talking about. Seven seconds in Photoshop that took me. And two of it was it loading and me physically clicking on it. The other two seconds were me saving. So anyway, this Crime Against Lighting is a 3 cost 4-3 four, in uh, Black Red because of course it is Legendary Creature Lizard Rogue and creatures you control but don't own are mercenaries in addition to their other types. Jeez. And at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X cards of target opponent's library where X is the number of outlaws you control. Jeez. Until end of turn, you may cast spells from among those cards and mana of any type can be spent to cast those spells. You've got to be kidding me. I mean, it's creatures you control but don't own, so I mean, just bring out, like, actual outlaws. Just your own outlaws. Don't even use that. I guess they failed to consider you might do that? So you got an army of mercenaries, and you've got full access to, like, their counter spells and their kill spells. You're, you're basically drawing, like, three, four, five, six cards a turn. You don't get to keep them, but still, that that is that is so stupid. This is probably the single most overpowered card in the set by far. Well, anyway, next up we got Breaches, the Blastmaster. It's an Izzet Colored 3-3 legendary creature goblin pirate with menace, and whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you may sacrifice an artifact. If you do, flip a coin. Great, now we're implementing luck in the game. When you win the flip, should say if you win the flip, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. If you lose, uh, Breaches, the Blastmaster, deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. So you win either way. Oh, good. And is it spell amplifier for people's stupid glass cannon spell spamming storm decks? Wonderful. My favorite archetype. Next up, one last job. I think this is already leaked. I don't remember, but it's uh, three white plus. So spree, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield for five. That is way overcosted. Uh, plus one, return target mount or vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Or plus one, return target aura or equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to a creature you control. And this is a story spotlight for some reason. Next up, Ornery Tumblewag. It's a three cost two, two uh, creature brushwag mount. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. When it attacks while saddled, double the number of 1-1 one, one counters on target creature, which is just inherently broken. Anytime anything says double counters, it's... It's completely off the deep end. And uh, Saddle too. So I guess they didn't learn from Scoot Swarm, although this is a little harder to use than just that, which is drop it in and go. Next up, we got Ariette, or whatever her name is, the Beguiler, because she's here too for some reason. Human Warlock, Lifelink, she's on the Wanted poster. Oh boy, one of those 16 different frames in this stupid set. And 4-4, uh, four, four. and whenever an order you control becomes attached to a non-land permanent and an opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to that of aura's mana value. Okay, the caps threw me off. Equal to that aura's mana value, gain control of that permanent for as long as that aura is attached to it. When the hell would that ever come up? And then they would get it back with a boost if they kill her. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Anyway, she's three colors, she's unplayable, go build some obnoxious commander deck and get stomped by control. Next up, Archmage's Newt, it's Duke cost 2-2 two, two in blue, creature Salamander Mount, because of course it is. And uh, when it deals common damage to a player, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn, flashback is equal to its mana cost, that card gains flashback zero until end of turn, instead, if it's saddled, saddle three. Pretty spicy, just more recursion, resurrection, you know, amplification, cloning, whatever you want to call it. It's just more of that for some reason. Because they want the game to be even faster and even swingier, even though nobody does. So next up, three cost, uh, it's a claim jumper, by the way. A creature, rabbit, mercenary, 3-3 three, three with vigilance. And when claim jumper enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a planes card, put it on the battlefield tapped. Then if an opponent controls more lands than you, repeat this process once. If you search your library this way, shuffle. Ooh, the great equalizer, I don't hate that. Um, next up, Obeka, splitter of seconds. Why not? Why wouldn't she be here too? Sure. Put Carl from Walking Dead in here, too. I just, this is so ridiculous. Anyway, 2-5, 3 color, just more commander bait crap that didn't fit in the commander decks. Ledger, creature, ogre, warlock, menace, and when she deals combat damage to a player, you get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. For some reason. 
how does that even work? What does it even do? Basically, upkeep triggers, I guess. I don't know. This is just stupid. Next up, Stoic Sphinx, which looks suspiciously like um, Keanu Reeves, but okay, good luck on seeing that. It's a four-cost double uh, blue 5-3 creature Sphinx with flash and flying, and it has hexproof as long as you haven't cast a spell this turn. Not a bad Sphinx, actually. Very basic and playable for once. It's about damn time. Probably a reprint. Next up, yep, we're back to this diversity bullshit again. It's a cool the unrepentant, maybe. Uh, it's two black plus two red. Legendary creature, scorpion, dragon, rogue, maybe. Uh, flying and trample, maybe. And uh, sac uh, five five, sacrifice three other creatures. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. This can only be activated once per turn as a sorcery, and only if the card is an Eldrazi. Oh, sorry, I mistranslated that. It, it actually says um period. Yeah, we all know what people are doing with this, but still, there, there are easier ways to do this, even in internal, so the card's kind of DOA. Gold Vein Hydra is next, oh boy, it's 0-0, zero, zero. Uh, 1 green plus X, we haven't had a Hydra like that in a while, actually, and that's kind of their thing. Uh, Vigilance Trample Haste, because why the f*** not? Seriously, the power level, this is absurd. It gets counters for every X, cool. When it dies, create a number of tapped treasure tokens equal to its power. Disgusting. Gee, why don't they give it Ward 7? Next up, Annie joins up. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? By the way, how did so many people, unless you were just like joking, not get where Jolene is from? The song with almost 100 million views on YouTube alone called Jolene by Dolly Parton, one of the most famous Western songs ever sang. Anyway, Annie is Annie Oakley, in case you really don't know what's going on. I don't know, maybe I'm just from America and that's what's up. But, uh, all right, so three cost trash, legendary enchantment, great. Uh, ETB deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, cool. Um, if a triggered ability of a legendary creature you control triggers, it triggers an additional time. So limited multicolor Mexican panharmonicon. I've got an idea. Just run panharmonicon. Then we've got Wiley Duke. Do I even need to say who that's based on? <laughs> a teen hero. Cool. If they're just throwing whack-ass shit in here, you know what they should have done? Atreyu from, from the never-ending story. And just absolutely not address it at all. He's just like a member of some tribe somewhere. <laughs> literally name him Atreyu. Literally give him the Orin necklace. And just straight-faced right through it. They don't have the balls, nor do they have the copyright lawyers. But, uh, all right, let's see what homeboy here does. Three cost, and there's a horse in the picture. It's still not Lathiel. I'm still mad. But um, three cost, green, white, four, two, ledger creature, human ranger with vigilance. And when he becomes tapped, you gain a life and draw a card. Holy crap, that is exploitable in my tap dance deck. And the flavor text is, I've seen a fair few worlds in my travels, and there's always some lowlife looking to prey on the innocent. That's where I come in, because I walk both sides of the law. Next up, Fractured Identity. I just threw this in because it's neat. I, I don't remember if they're legal or not, or if they're the mystery guest or that. Who f***ing knows at this point? Their own staff at WotC has been getting this wrong live on camera, so you know what? I'm not even going to do it in the service of looking it up. So uh, definitely reprint. I think all the ones in this trim are reprint. So uh, five cost, uh, blue, white, exile target, non-land permanent. Each player other than its controller creates a token that's a copy of it. So they bring out Emrakul, you get rid of their Emrakul, and you give everybody else in multiplayer commander an Emrakul. You'll never guess what's already in my don't attack me blue, white commander deck. <laughs> Roughly a 50 cent mythic, by the way, in case you're wondering. Only been printed, uh, depends on how you measure it, but twice. Well, we did it. We made it. Except now I have to edit this. You just get to go on to the next video. I have to go edit this shit. And then make a video about stolen art. F*** you, Faye Dalton, you bitch. Well, thanks for watching. I will mention, if you made it this far in, um, I think this will... You know what? Okay, so this, this happened. This already happened. Two shitty uh, reprint sets in a row. It was Eternal Masters and whatever was around that, and people were like, two strikes are out. I was right, no, Eternal Masters was only a scam after the second print run that they totally weren't sitting on the whole time and proven by serial numbers. But anyway, in theory, in my opinion, that's what happened. Then they had, I think not in this order, but Masters 25 completely flopped, and they also had uh, Iconic Masters completely flopped. Because they just, they overprinted it, they flooded it, and they were too weak on what they put in the set.
Now, remember, stores were like, oh, oh, how much Masters sets do I want after Masters, you know, Modern Masters 1, 2, and 3 were all just bomb? Uh, let me check the limit on my credit card. That much. Send me that much. So when they announced, I'm pretty sure it was Double Masters, I looked at the card lineup. I looked at um, the fact that you get two rares per pack, but it was still, you know, effectively about the same MSRP. And I said, let me log in real quick and check the limit on my credit card. And that is how much I bought. I think it was about 18 grand. I actually could have raised the limit, but uh, I thought, let's not get too nuts. I barely even open a box of that. By the time the boxes showed up and I was paying like 142 a box, they were selling, I think, into the threes. I, I made so much money just selling them sealed because everybody else was like, ooh, fool me twice. I'm not going to jump in head first to another master set because the last two were bad. I'm like, okay, that was the past. Just Let's just write that off. The community is the same size, but this is like 10 times better. There's way more value in it, and you get two, two rares per pack. This is going to be the most outrageous set ever. So I jumped on it, and I made... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. I don't remember how much. It was it was outrageous. I mean, so was shipping and eBay fees, but uh I ended up selling some of them on Facebook, dude. I started listing them. I pissed off a bunch of other stores, but at that point I was pretty sure I was closing anyway. And that, you know, ten grand or whatever it was was a really good reason to close. I was making more on YouTube and eBay than I was at everything else at my shop, including cards. And the sets before that had just about bankrupted me. The standard sets were shit. The ma the master sets were shit, even though I only ordered like four boxes of each. Because I knew. The first one I probably got 12 and got burned, but um, I think I got my money out of them. Second one was trash. Masters was just garbage. Masters 25, utter trash. And then, like I said, like eight standard sets around that were all garbage. So I was losing thousands of dollars every time Wizards did anything. So I'm like, I'm cashing out. This, is, this brings me up to even for the year. F*** it. F*** Watsy and f*** this shop. And then one of my vendors, one of my local vendors for stuff that was primarily for eBay, they shut down a month later. And then I had financial troubles ever since then. But uh, big, big, big contract last year paid off all my debts. So, uh, hey. So I'm a little more casual about YouTube instead of forcing it. You guys know way back in the day, I would make one and a half videos per day on average. It was tiring. It was full time. It still wasn't eight hours a day. But uh, sometimes I was really pushing it. You know, coming up with new series and stuff. But you get you get running out of ideas. And that's why I'm like, screw it. I'm going to run a tech channel. I'm going to run a gaming channel. And I'm going to run a prepper channel. And that's what I did. Hedge your bets. And wouldn't you know it, Chris Cox drove magic right off a cliff. So that's the moral of that story. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket, especially if it involves your, your career. And then, well, then COVID happened. So that was fun. Then I got to work at a hospital while COVID was going on. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, Watsy. Appreciate it. So how is that relevant to this set? Well, I just told you in the middle a little tale about how everybody's canceling the orders of this because they don't trust it. While this is the most powerful set in standard I have ever seen. This makes Ikoria look like nothing. This is basically Modern Horizons by itself. Also, there's more rares. There's a new type of pack. Just everything screams this is going to be worth an absolute fortune from the high trim cards down to the normal trim cards. So this is an investment advice, and just in principle, I'm not giving Watsi a penny of my 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 uh, my money. But if I was a betting man, I'd say you could probably pick this up at a really good price and probably open it or sell it sealed day of or day after for a, a pretty big increase. Watsy could do a fake second run where really they just undershipped because all the distributors are like, we're not taking as much as MKM. Shut up. We're not taking as much. Keep it. We don't want shit that people are going to want to return in such high numbers that we have to deny them and risk our entire business relationship with this shop and have them start shopping around for different distributors. No, we want less because we're going to sell less. So screw you. Now they're wrong, but that doesn't matter. Scarcity equals money. So, um... I'm going to follow this real closely. In fact, right now, let me look on eBay what it's going for. Okay, $125 a box, but there's almost nobody listing this, even though it ships on April 12th. Wow, people really didn't order this. They aren't kidding. This is kind of weird. And uh, collector's boosters are going between $200 and $210, depending upon how many you buy. Wow. That's higher than I thought, but potentially a little low. Now you're gonna lose about 20% if you flip something on eBay. So you get it for 210 and you think you can sell it for 240, congratulations, you just broke even. And that's a pretty good margin. So um I don't think anybody's getting rich on this unless you got it at distributor prices. You might wanna, you know, talk to a shop and be like, hey, your distributor's trying to shove this down your throat. Tell you what, 
you order them for eighty-five, ninety a box is about what it is. I'll give you one ten. Give me like three cases. Now you're making money when the shit has has not enough inventory to go around. I guarantee it. Or at least it's looking like it. Also, I don't guarantee anything. It's just a saying. So once again, not investment or business advice. Not saying you should do this. I'm just saying, watch this because this will be a very interesting story. And I'll see you guys next time.